He has a giant ninja sword here in their little tent, and it's my favorite. He won't stop carrying it around for the rest of the movie. It's a collector's item. Like I said, the weapons never match. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, yes, it, it's one of those swords that, like, if you tried to tap a tree hard with it, the handle would break off. Yeah. Oh, no, this, my wife has stopped me from buying this sword at <laughs> four in the morning. <laughs> By coming downstairs and turning off the TV as I'm writing down a phone number so many times. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because the other things that I've done for money are even worse than this. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. So, you know who just learned about assigned seating in a movie theater? Who's that? Everyone who saw this movie <laughs> in northern Kentucky except me. It was just... Dozens and dozens and dozens of old people screaming seat numbers across the theater, very confused after learning this concept for the first time. So much fun. Do I take the chair with me to where I want to sit? What? <laughs> like a Lego. What? It was 20 minutes of that. It was ridiculous. Amazing. Awesome. And guys, guess what? We got the band back together sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm amazing, Noah. <laughs> but however, unlike this movie, I will not promise to be on this episode and then be gone after the A segment. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you just weren't here in the B segment or something. <laughs> Paul DeSorbo on us. <laughs> All right. So tell us, Heath. What will we be breaking down today? We watched The Reliant. Ba, ba, ba. Watch the shit out of The Reliant. <laughs> it's the story of I'm I'm not sure. I don't know. <laughs> the projector at my theater broke several really? times. I honestly don't know what happened in the movie. I'm really hoping they explain some stuff in an early scene I missed cuz otherwise it's fucking insane, but from what I patched together, the infamous Antifa biker gang of the world took over a Walmart in Ohio and the world plunged into anarchy. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you nailed yeah, it. No, that's you didn't miss anything. Man. That was the Actually, movie we watched, too. <laughs> no, Interesting. OK. okay. <laughs> and Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you stand for our nation's Second Amendment, in spite of all possible evidence, both personal and statistical, even in your own film. <laughs> in the movie. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you will love this movie. Let me tell you, this movie's a real Sandy Hook line and stinker. Oh. <laughs> I, I see how you thought it was. Yeah, okay. So, now, this was, of course, th this movie was so fucking good that theaters could not handle a whole fucking weekend of all the people that would come in, right? So they had to shave it down to just one showing Thursday at 7 p.m., the golden hour, as they call it in the <laughs> cinematic universe. Thursday at 7, you saw it then, or you got to wait until it's free on Amazon next month. But we went to the goddamn theaters for it. They were it was playing every fucking where I only had to drive two hours each way to see it. It was a one night fathom event. It was goddamn amazing. Now, I believe I won in terms of going to the theater to see it. I pissed off the audience by spontaneously laughing three times. Ooh. Does it, can anyone beat three? <laughs> I definitely laughed when you weren't supposed to, which is any time you would laugh. I do yep. that a lot yep. in life. Uh, I did that. <laughs> but definitely when I'm watching Kevin Sorbo movies, um, I did that a lot more than three times, but I only got in trouble. I think specifically that I noted in my notes twice. Yeah, I think I'm I think I'm at two, two. So, yeah, you're you're the one. Okay, yeah, no, but by the third time I left, everyone else in the theater had also given up on the movie. So I only pissed people off twice. So I guess we're tied. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Uh, yeah. Noah, you already started to mention it. I'm going to say best worst theater release, which was <laughs> yesterday, and they got pulled. <laughs> they had enough money to buy one day of theater time, mm -hmm. and they're hoping to make enough on that day to eventually buy more theater time. That's oh, is plan. that the... Yep. Yeah. 
It's like going to a high stakes poker table and buying one chip. <laughs> the business model. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The art. <laughs> All right. Uh, and by the way, that's not like their secret plan. That's not like, oh, we know this from insiders. That's their plan according to their website. Yep. They yes. sent that yes. to someone and were like, hey, put this on the front page of our website. Yep. You guys need to double up in the seats in Christian cities like <laughs> Cincinnati. And they did. Fuck. It was packed. Oh. All right. So I was going to go with best worst weapons. No one in this movie ever has a reasonable fucking weapon. Either they're walking nope. around like turning corners with a Gatling gun or they have some weird medieval fucking morning star shit going on. It's just too subtle to be intentionally fucking with us, but it's too insane not to be fucking with us. <laughs> there's there's a Damascus sword in, there the, is. in this yep. movie. <laughs> when Sarugi starts walking around. We do. Yep. We got one of those. And by the way, just to make sure that they have this category, the best worst weapons one on lockdown, the marketing for this film included an assault rifle raffle. Yes, it did. Wait, what? They literally, <laughs> they literally gave away an assault rifle to a random viewer as part of the marketing for this movie. It Are you allowed to do that? Was I don't think you, I hope you're not. What? Me. <laughs> Doing a heroin raffle. That'd be safe. <laughs> Yes. So much safer. Yes, it would be. Christ. Absolutely would be. Make the I movie don't, better? I feel like, honestly, if you want background checks, just check and see if they saw this fucking movie. Put them on the list if they saw this movie. I'm fine going on the list if that's the way it's done. All right? Yeah. Check my background. Good. <laughs> just do theirs, too. Thank you. I'm going to go with best worst movie blackout. So it's, <laughs> it's right towards the end of the film. But this film will pass out and wake up in the middle of itself. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to it. We will. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. We're going to pause here for one 240th of the time I spent uh, driving to see this motherfucker. And when we come back, we'll dive into all the playing guns in the backyard that is The Reliance. Kevin. K Sorbet. Hey, guys. How's it going? Uh, you mind if I smoke in here? Um, you can't. well, thank you. Great. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Sorbo, uh, we can't tell you how excited we are to have you as part of our big. Yeah. Movie yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm fucking pleased as punch to be here, guys. You did a swear. Love the script. Absolutely love it. Uh, just one little problem. Uh, what's that, Mr. Sorbo? Well, uh, haven't read it yet. Don't have the time. So, um, hit me, boys. Oh, um, okay. Uh, so uh, we're going to start off with Brian Bosworth's daughter dying in a car accident. Oh, her, her name is Faith. Get it? Yeah. Love it. Love it. Go next. Right, right. But he fights the hospital cops, so he ends up going to jail. Right. Relatable. Who hasn't been there, right? Exactly. Great. Exactly. So seven years later, you and your family are celebrating your son's birthday when a giant band of looters led by Brian Bosworth mm -hmm. attacks your house. Right. Tax my house makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Oh, and by the way, your daughter doesn't like guns at all. Bitch, right? Yeah. Okay, uh, just real quick. Uh, how about we kill my character right here, uh, and then I can go sit on a boat and watch reruns of Hercules. I mean, can, can we still use you in the trailer? I expect to be in 100% of the trailer. Keep going. Oh, okay. All right, so... You get killed, I guess, and then we think that your wife gets killed, too. So we cut to one month later. Your family's all camped out in the woods, but they go back to your house for some medicine and some guns. Medicine and guns, right. The two most vital parts of survival. Sure. Great. Yeah. And, and your daughter, the one who doesn't like guns, she runs into her fiancé, who she thought was dead, but was actually just out looting and murdering. With the people who killed you and your wife. Okay. Um, is he a Jew? Uh, actually, legal made us cut explicitly saying he's Jewish. Yeah, classic. They do that. Same thing happened in Let There Be Light, actually. Same thing, exactly. Oh, cool. So yeah. he's with the family now, but she's mad at him for all the looting and murdering. And your son spends his time loudly posing theological debates to his sisters while he should be hiding. Okay, uh, is he a Jew? Uh, no, he's your son in the movie. Like, in real life? No. No, in the movie. Oh, okay, got it. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, yeah, Hercules meant there's a lot of swimmers out in foreign waters, if you know what I mean. 
Yeah, I mean, we don't know for sure he's not yeah. yours. So anyway, one night someone sneaks in and steals their bug out bag. So your son leaves to go join the looters. And then mm -hmm. just as he does, the tent burns down. But luckily, mom is there with two sassy marshals. Very sassy. And then together, they take down the bad guys and bring Brian Bosworth to Jesus. Right. But your Jew son-in-law dies. Fucking nice. Jew. And your daughter has a flashback to your dead daughter's accidental gun death. Right. You want to make an omelet. That's that's no. what I said. I wanted to right. put it in the movie. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Good. Uh, so wait, though. Um, you boys are telling me I'm in nine minutes of this thing and the rest of it is sitting in the woods arguing theology all while demonstrating how useless and dangerous guns are, even in the unrealistic fantasy of someone who worships them. Yes, I am 100 percent in hot damn Tim. What? Mr. Sorbo did a swear first. <laughs> I did. You guys notice I'm looking more and more like a horse. <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown. And I got to say, the fun with this one started way before the credits. All right. This was, a, as we said, a one night fathom event. Uh, so it was preceded <laughs> by this little like six or seven minute DVD outtakes documentary thing or whatever that repeated for like half an hour before it. So I was already in love with this movie way before it started. <laughs> um, they, the writer comes on and goes like every time we made we ran out of money god would find us more money yep and i'm like oh is that why you had to do your church scene under a green screen <laughs> <laughs> actual you couldn't quotes. get a church no nope. <laughs> that's weird not for this one yeah i fell in love with the movie when i saw three guys with matching yeezus shirts as i walked in <laughs> is that a thing yeezus i don't know what that is apparently it's <laughs> Kanye it sounds like Jesus, but it was spelled Jesus. I don't, I don't even know what it is. But as I saw that, I was like, this is going to be amazing. And then I saw a giant crowd of very, very old, very, very drunk people walking into oh, the nice. theater as me. Nice. That was pretty exciting. <laughs> so, yeah, I had, I had a pretty full theater. Eli, I know you were scared that you were going to have to watch this one naked. Was there anybody else in the theater with you? No, it was me, two GAM listeners. <laughs> And the same little old lady who has been in every movie I have ever watched in New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> who now says hello and goodbye by saying God bless you to me every time she walks in and out of the theater. Did you have any non-senior citizens? I did I had, not. No. Nope. <laughs> I had one besides me. There was, there was all the old people. There was me. The only other person under 60 was, I'm pretty sure, inside a Faraday cage that he built. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure he's an artisanal gun maker. I'm pretty sure that's his <laughs> job based on his appearance. I, I had one person under 60 in my theater as well. And it, it, he looks so fucking out of place. And then I found out after the show that he was a listener. So, yeah. That there was you go. It. Really? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Phenomenal. The only thing I want to point out about my pre-show thing is, yes, I got the amazing documentary, but my amazing documentary was immediately followed by the gayest ad for Cirque du Soleil <gasps> I've ever seen. So my entire theater like froze in gay panic because yes. it was literally like, yeah, we prayed to the Lord every day. And then it was like, oh, la, 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 look at this dude's balls. La, 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 really close on balls. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. There's there's two things from the documentary that I absolutely had to point out. One is. There's this little behind the scenes interview with Kevin Sorbo where he's describing his his methodology of uh, deciding what movies to do. He says, you know, I read the first 20 pages of the script and if it holds my interest, I go with it. So somewhere in the world, there is a file of the scripts Kevin Sorbo rejected and I want that so goddamn bad. <laughs> <laughs> the second was the director comes on and he goes, you know what? What's going to really connect people to this movie is that it's realistic. It's not about the zombie virus or, quote, the tornadoes from the comet that hit the Earth. What? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like an alien jumped into his body for this interview right. and all of a sudden had to give two examples of movies while, like, looking around <laughs> a movie theater to try and guess what human movies are. <laughs> Yes. And also guessing what a tornado and a comet are, apparently. <laughs> right, right. And beyond that, even if he'd gotten that right, 
the director is selling this movie on its realism. Yep. <laughs> Thought that was worth emphasizing. Yeah. And this is when my theater was like, oh, we're having technical difficulties. We're not going to be able to show you the movie right away. So I got to spend an extra 15 minutes just listening to like really loud, separate conversations about Fox and Friends and like <laughs> the interaction of alcohol and arthritis medication. It was ridiculous. So many popcorn farts at full volume in these theaters. <laughs> yeah. God's movie, technical difficulties. Yeah, I'm right, sure I right. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure I, mi I know I missed the next scene from what you guys explained to me earlier. Okay, all right. So, we, yeah, we'll walk you through it. The movie finally starts, and this is a bold fucking choice. They decide to open on Brian Bosworth acting. So, <laughs> yeah, he, he's bringing this. <laughs> oh, I missed I miss the Boz doing his, like, bits. Oh, you did. yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. The, the whole first like three minutes of this movie are Boz looking at the camera going, someone help my daughter who is limping in my arms. <laughs> <sighs> so, yeah, so his daughter was in a car accident. He runs in screaming for help. Dr. Kevin Sorbo shows up, right? And he realizes that the Boz reeks of booze. He was out drunk driving and, and caused this accident. So he tells the security guards, hey, you got to watch this guy. I'll go save his daughter. Tiny note here, because uh, I want to see if maybe there was an error in my film as well. Noah, was your <laughs> security guard a CGI baby? Because my security guard was a CGI I, baby. I had him down as Skippy the security munchkin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good. Consistent. Did your security guard look like Eli? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got it. All right. So, but, and this is where we introduce one of the most painful parts of this movie. The little girl, his little girl's name, pauses, is Faith. So, Get it? That's that's really clever. <laughs> oh my god! And and so they're bringing the daughter back, and and Boz is screaming after them. I can't lose my faith. Oh, that's genius! They tie it back in later. I like this movie so oh, much they, more. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, there's mm -hmm. about 231 more of those. So get ready. <laughs> yeah. As a matter of fact, the fucking security munchkin turns to him. And he says, "Now, because he, because he, like they try to cuff him, and nobody cuffs the boss. Damn it! So he fights with him until he's got the gun." And Skippy the security munchkin goes, now what would your faith tell you to do? Now what would your faith tell you to do? <laughs> <laughs> All right, but Boz does give up his gun and 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 uh, they, they march him off. And then we cut to seven years later. <laughs> <laughs> and this is when my movie started. So I was like, wow, seven years later is the cold open of this fucking movie. Bold. Are you Bold. serious? <laughs> I want to make a Christian movie so bad and do that now. <laughs> All right. So and we're going to meet a plethora of fucking people. So keep up. We're going to meet Sophie and Adam. They are a just barely adult couple that are about to get married. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Sophie is Kevin Sorbo's oldest daughter. Uh, we're also going to meet Eli and Jimmy. That's the older and younger brothers in this family. And we're also going to introduce. And this is so fucking lazy on the background in the TV. The news guy is saying the dollar has collapsed and society is over now. Meanwhile, <laughs> the weather or something. We're still here, though. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, no, we're, yeah, we're still broadcasting television, but society has collapsed. Fox and Friends <laughs> runs on its own generator stand. <laughs> we're using Bitcoin. It's fine. We're still yeah, <laughs> going here at Fox. Yeah. Also, tiny thing. They play a little chess in this scene, mm -hmm. and we have never once seen a movie for this show that has ever correctly played chess or not done something wildly stupid chess wise. And they kept the pattern going. <laughs> I think they set up the board in a way that might have been theoretically possible, <laughs> but, but they show one of the characters using his knight <laughs> and he, he double hops it. Because yeah. he can't, like, in his head, do the math of up two over yes, one. Yes, right. He walks it one, up two, one over two. And over. Yes. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> I love that shit. And by the way, I should point out that the whole fucking premise of this movie is that society has collapsed in the background and that looters are out and everything. None of that is ever explained. All we ever get is somebody on the TV going, well, the dollar's collapsed. You know what that means? The apocalypse. No law. Perch. Yeah, right, right, exactly. Murder everybody at Walmart. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know about you guys, but I take out my machete and my purge mask every morning. I check the value of the dollar, and then I sadly put yeah. them away. 
Yeah. And when the dollar collapses to zero, that's when you go try to rob cash dollars from people. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right. I love it. They're walking around spending fucking money at the beginning of this dumbass movie. <laughs> Just going to Walmart with a handful of liquid silver. I don't know what the fuck they think. <laughs> Do you take backer buckets at Journeys? <laughs> so, <laughs> but it just so happens that we've caught these guys on Jimmy's birthday. So the little girl comes and says, Jimmy, it's time to stop pretending to play chess. This is getting painful. Come over here and open your one fucking birthday present. Because it's a movie present. and no one gets two presents in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see the scene either. My, my oh, projector broke again. Again, really? They gave <laughs> yeah. you the, 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 you just saw the odd numbered scenes. I yeah, guess. that I thought that was going to be the pattern. I was like, this is, I'm really happy about this, actually. I, I got disappointed when it started working for most of the rest of the movie. We made it out of here in 40 minutes. This is the fucking best. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. So, no. So, dad got him a rocket launcher. I mean, this gun is ridiculous, right? <laughs> As with all the guns in this movie, it's like nine times more gun than you could ever need for any real human situation. <laughs> yeah. I got you this satellite that shoots down nuclear missiles. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. And Sophie, the oldest daughter, goes, sheesh, dad, on his birthday, and then storms off all anti-gun. That's going to be important to the movie as well. And then quick before they can eat cake or open the rest of the presents, Kevin Sorbo's like, come on, let's let's shoot stuff oh uh, that was awkward who wants to shoot a gun huh yeah huh? how about some gun shooting <laughs> also we should point out at this point that the movie is shot like through the camera shot in such a manner that i believe nobody told the cameraman how or where the actors were going to stand before he filmed this movie yes <laughs> it is the camera is always chasing after everyone every time they move <laughs> Well, and beyond that, too, every camera angle has a distinct no, no, because the pantry is there, kind of a feel to the camera placement, too, right? He's constantly in this tiny fucking room trying desperately to get all the actors in the same shot. All right, so Sophie storms off to her room, and this is going to be pivotal to the film. We see her hiding a small key. We also introduce mysterious dead sister in this movie. Mm -hmm. We'll come so, back to both of see those. See if you can solve this puzzle. The sister's dead. The big sister doesn't like guns. <laughs> yeah. That's I was sure puzzle. it was like, oh, it's a mass shooting. It's This is like a Newtown child. This is terrible. <laughs> they put that in their movie and in they don't their realize movie. what's happening. And it's, it's yeah. actually, it turns out when we get the reveal, it turns out it was worse than that. Right? It's literally yep. worse than that. That's correct. Yeah. Yep. At least in terms of making their pro Second Amendment point. And that's what's amazing to me. They, 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 they advertise this as a pro Second Amendment action movie. Like, finally, an action movie that doesn't denigrate guns. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. By the way, one other detail on my walk into the theater. You just reminded me. I saw a Christian themed T-shirt that was a memorial to the people who got shot in Dayton. Oh, Wow. It was like a pro Second Amendment memorial shirt about the shootings in Dayton. Wow. Wow. To be fair, yeah. though, the day that guy walked into that T-shirt shop, he nailed it with his beliefs. He was like, hi, sorry to take your time. First of all, <laughs> <laughs> do you have a shirt that expresses my condolences for those who died in Dayton while expressing my commitment to the second method? Two, do you take backer buckets? <laughs> <laughs> And they did, and they did. Yep. yep. <laughs> Nailed it on all fronts. All right. So now we're going to cut over to K Sorbs, uh, Jimmy, that's the older brother, and Adam, that's the fiance, driving out to the sh uh, shooting range. And Adam is talking about that last scene when, when Sophie stormed off, and he's like, well, what was that all about? And K Sorbs is like, what? this is his actual line. He says, well, let's just say she has a little trouble letting things go. Now... <laughs> That becomes so much more fucked up when you realize that the thing she's having trouble letting go is the fact that he feloniously killed his daughter through negligence. Yes, so his he dead one daughter. Fucking daughter. <laughs> what she has problems letting go is his dead child. Yes, yes. All right, so they pull up at the ammo store, I guess, to get bullets. And you see there's a bunch of protesters off to the side. Now, good luck determining what these guys are protesting. 
Oh shit, <laughs> here comes me and my group of hippies. <laughs> I love yep. the fucking signs for this protest. Yes. The okay. signs are amazing. They're just vague single words. Yes. Mm -hmm. Disobey. So, yeah, disobey and just like stop. Yeah. Don't. Yes. <laughs> uh, there's also one that says, Where is our justice? Yep. Oh yeah, yeah, clever. Yeah, and also, so this is like kind of supposed to be Antifa, right? They're trying yes. to like uh -huh. point in that direction. Yeah. Apparently, they think Antifa is pirates. Yep, but like <laughs> biker themed pirates, yes. some Hipster. weird combination of that. <laughs> Pirate bikers. Also, and I will admit, I cheated. I only know this because of the incredible documentary before the movie. One of the signs is an anarchist A that they got wrong several times, but still kept the sign for. You can see <laughs> the old, stop making it a star, Joshua. I swear to motherfuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so they, they pull up into this store. They see the Antifa people marching that way, and they're like, you know, don't look them in the eye or something. And they, But they go into the store anyway, and of course the store gets attacked by Antifa while they're in there getting their bullets. Yeah, and every single person in this store has like nine holstered guns ready to go, and they just pull them out and start firing. Yeah, but it doesn't really help. All right. Well, that's the amazing thing about this movie is it is this is the first time that all the armed characters get mobbed by unarmed people and fucking die because that's not how guns work. Yes, you idiots. Yeah. There was a room full of guns, and according to them, the good guys lose here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So and, and oh, I love this so fucking much. So they're running out to their car. Of course, Kevin Sorbo just pulls his pistol out of his waistline that he carries with him everywhere. They run out to the parking lot. Jimmy gets knocked out and Adam's about to get fucked up. So Kevin Sorbo shoots in the air and he yells, leave <laughs> us alone. <laughs> just that th oh. that clip is my favorite like imagine writing that line into your movie and then not eating bleach yep. right oh uh, in in his head a lightning bolt went out of his gun and into the <laughs> sky and lit up the heavens it was amazing he screams <laughs> leave us alone and then uh, <laughs> after he shot that bullet in the air he tries to like keep helping people and i really want him to be like Oh fuck! That was I'm out of bullets now from the warning <laughs> shot. To the oh, side. That was dumb. Dumb. Uh, so we have to this, just use them all on bad guys. We have this um, amazingly cliche moment too, where they try to get in the car and the car won't start because it's suddenly from the fucking seventies. Like, come on, cars don't even do that shit anymore. <laughs> but it's a movie, so the fucking car won't start at first, and all the bad guys are attacking him. But they get away, and he hustles back to his house. Yells to his kids as he pulls up. They pull up. There's a goddamn hand axe hanging out of the window of the car. Yep. <laughs> they didn't bother to push out the hand axe on the way or anything. Mm -mm. It's nope, just seriously. hanging out there like the fucking ninja stars in Ninja. Yeah, just going to play some mumbly peg. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he hustles home and he yells to the kids. He's like, grab your, the government is coming bags, kids, quick. They're, they're storming the strategic location of... Our town in rural Ohio. Yes. It's going to it's gonna be a big takeover of the world. But right here first <laughs> now, this is where it's starting. Yeah, it's starting here. Yeah. And so this movie finally revealed itself to be the prepper porn that it is because the daughter's going like, Dad, you're always so weird about your dogged determination and preparedness. Nothing like what's happening in this movie will ever. Oh, no. Right. Like, that's how this whole scene plays out. Right. Yeah. But again, in the prepper imagination, they lock themselves in their gym backer safe and eat dehydrated eggs for six years while you and I all get butt fucked by like Portland college students or whatever the fuck's yes. going on. Right. That's what actually great. happens is they fucking die. <laughs> well, well, right. They have to explain that away. Right. Because obviously nobody who watches this movie would be able to sympathize at all with with Kevin Sorbo if he didn't have a plan for this kind of shit. But. His bitchy liberal daughter fucked it all up because that key that we saw her hiding earlier, that was the key to the gun safe, y'all. Oh, so he and again, just to be clear, this movie isn't positing Kevin Sorbo dies because he is unarmed. 
They're positing that Kevin Sorbo dies because he doesn't have enough guns yep. when facing yes. his opponents. Yeah. Right, right. And because gun safes are fucking stupid and they, they take <laughs> lives. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Guns don't kill people. Gun safes kill people. Yep. Also, That's the message <laughs> of this movie. Let, let me just get this out of the way right now because it's the greatest reveal of all time. It will turn out that the safe is not key operated. <laughs> no, you're right. No. Nope. Also, I, I love this vision of the anti-gun person that Sophie's standing around because like the bad guys show up, right? And they start shooting and Kevin Sorbo's shooting back. Everybody's shooting at everybody. And she's still sticking with her guns on that anti-gun thing, right? She's still like, no, I'm not going to tell it because, they, because those are murder weapons. <laughs> I'll just stay here. I'll tell him I'm a Democrat. I will be fine. You guys do what you got to do. <laughs> um, yeah, so the bad guys show up. And then, of course, Sorbo has another fire a bullet in the air yell moment where he goes, we will defend ourselves, <laughs> which is, by the way, what northern Montanans say when they come, right? <laughs> but Brian Bosworth is there for revenge, apparently, right? So his daughter died from the car accident and Kevin, he blames Kevin Sorbo, the doctor for that, for some reason. Oh, uh, okay. This makes slightly more sense now. Okay. <laughs> Does it? I thought the boss was just like, we're going to kill a doctor today. Let's do this. I know one of those. Yeah. I honestly, better than the movie. Just going to throw that out yeah. there. If you just been like, eeny, meeny, miny, buzz. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then this yeah. is where they piss us off. Entirely by killing off K Sorbs. We came for a fucking K Sorbs movie. We're eight minutes in and he's dead now. How bad is your movie when you can't afford Kevin Sorbo the whole way? <laughs> <laughs> oh, even worse than that, did you guys see who was first billed in this movie on IMDb? Eric Roberts. Eric right? Roberts. Where was he? I didn't see him. Neither did I. He's the gun store owner. Remember when they go to Walmart to get bullets? Oh, oh you're he's kidding in it me. Less than Sorbo. Yeah. He is in it for a wow. quarter of a second. He's like, uh, protect the people, not their property. Oh, and then oh God, Jesus Christ. He is out oh, of the that film. Was their Eric first... Roberts 100% had a really violent flashback and had to stop filming. There's no <laughs> question about that. <laughs> All right. So K Sorbs dies dramatically. They're radically underarmed, but the kids have to run into the woods because that's the only place this movie could afford to shoot. <laughs> oh. Yep. Like 20 feet into the woods, yep. just to be clear. <laughs> Again, they, they, it's just the backyard. They're just going into the backyard of their yes. house. It'll Super duper. continue to not make any sense because of that for the entire movie. They yeah. will fail to not catch their or someone else's house in their shot of the woods 150 times throughout this film. <laughs> yeah, right. All right. So now the kids have hauled ass, right? All five of the kids. But the mom and the fiance are stuck at the house. So we have this moment where like where like the boss and a guy who I just have written in his straw hat. Yeah, I, I, I have I, him as straw <laughs> cowboy hat, too. OK, yeah. So, so straw hat and the boss are going to like, you know, question uh, the wife and shit about where their kids are. Damn it. Because he still needs to get revenge on the dead Kevin Sorbo by, I don't know, fucking with his kids. Stealing his daughter is what it sounded like to me at this point. And I think that might still be the case, right? Because yeah. he goes up to the mom and he's like, all right, one time off. Or he shows her a picture of a child. And then he's like, I'm going to take your daughter. That's the offer. And mom's like, no. <laughs> yeah. What? What? <laughs> How did that fit into the plot? I don't understand. Even after you explained to me what I missed, I don't understand. No, because it makes a ton of sense. Because remember later on when it's revealed that he snuck into their campsite, he steals... Their backpack, exactly, right? Remember? <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's how you know he's after their daughter. Because that, so that time was a picture he's... of a Jansport backpack that he really wanted or something? Yeah, the, no, the, yeah. The, the, the amazing thing about it is there are no number of scenes we could add back into your viewing experience to make any of this make sense, Heath. <laughs> I figured that might be the case. I had a yeah. funny feeling it didn't fucking matter that I missed stuff. Yeah. But the whole reason that that actually happens, right, because it doesn't make any fucking sense. This is my daughter. You have one that's approximately the same size and color. I'll take it. Right. That doesn't make any sense. But it sets up the amazing line from mom where she says, I die before I would give up my faith. Huh? Shots. Oh, faith. Faith is the name yep. of the child. <laughs> so good. Also, there's this 
amazing moment where like Adam won't tell him where the kids went either, which I mean, they went into the woods and everyone saw that, but okay, but he won't tell him where they went. And so there's this weak ass, nowhere near him gun butt strike that the boss does. And somehow that is going to be my Halloween costume. That little weak <laughs> ass hit. Oh, I got it. I have it. Just so you're interested. Okay. So you dress up, right? Normal, normal clothes. You dress Lucinda as a gun and she just dances around you in a circle <laughs> as you trick or treat. <laughs> I'm getting him. There we go. Yeah, right, right. There we go. All right. <laughs> They'll use a gun as a varmint hammer later in this. <laughs> oh, they will. They will. Yeah, actually. They will. <laughs> so, all right. So now we cut a month ahead of time, right? This is a month later. The kids are still living in the backyard and they have a makeshift <laughs> tent made of tarps. Yeah. Okay. Now, I am no out. This is going to surprise listeners and coworkers alike. I'm not an outdoorsman. Mm -hmm. Do you keep the fire <laughs> inside your tent? Not ideally. You it can be done. Not not the way they were doing it. No, you would die of smoke These inhalation. These people should not do that. Yeah. <laughs> Every time These they walk, should definitely not do that. In and out of this tent, I wanted them to open the flap and just plumes of smoke follow them out. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. They have zero ventilation on it. There's no smoke coming out of the top of it. So <laughs> I don't know where it's going. <laughs> also, on the way out into the woods to show us this tent, we see him walking just for a second, and the little brother <laughs> eats it so hard yes. and violently. <laughs> he clearly hurt himself for real. And his name is Eli. It is. And it looked so exactly like. Many times that I've been walking on a very level sidewalk in a city next to Eli, and he just collapses into a pool for no reason. It's in the name. I enjoy that so it's much. It's in the name. We Eli's do not. We don't balance well. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. So, yeah. So we cut to the kids a month later. They're in their little tent. Sophie is masturbating to a picture of her wedding dress. Uh, apparently, Faith, the little girl, got shot in the head at some point in the altercation. But don't she worry, did. not not in a bad way. Uh -uh. Yeah, and she's got like a bloody bandage wrapped around her head that clearly hasn't been changed forever. So she's just had like a massive bleeding head wound for a month. A third, yes. To their most recent title. Yes. And just just to be clear, that will not be the focus. It's not let's get Faith help. It is, oh man, Faith's wound-based night terrors are irritating. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Damn her and her PTSD. <laughs> yeah. Also, one other fantastic detail about this scene. I thought I saw one of the older brothers when they were going back into the house and then running into the woods. I thought I saw him grab a sword. And I was like, did he fucking grab a sword? Is that really what happened? And he did. He yes, did. he did. He has a giant ninja sword here in their little tent and it's my favorite he won't stop carrying it around for the rest of the movie it's a collector's item like i said the weapons never match yeah <laughs> and by the way yes and it's one of those swords that like if you tried to tap a tree hard with it the handle would break off yeah oh no this my wife has stopped me from buying this sword at <laughs> four in the morning <laughs> By coming downstairs and turning off the TV as I'm writing down a phone number so many times. <laughs> yeah. And this guy is attached to the sword the way Eli would have been if if he got that at four in the morning. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. exactly. He will not let go of the sword ever. Or use yeah. it. He will also no. never use the sword, too, which is No, amazing. but he'll try to pretend he's about to. <laughs> yes. But he never will. Yeah. And also, they're all, like, in great full makeup after a month in a tent at this point. And this guy with the sword is like perfectly shaved. Yep. And they're like, have you been shaving this whole month? He's like, I shaved with my sword. I told you it would be useful. <laughs> I brought the sword for stuff. Shut up. But he's not the only one with a dumb fucking weapon. Okay. So we get the scene like right after that, right? The kids have been out in the woods for 30 days. Now they have to go back to the house for some antibiotics because 30 days later, they're starting to worry about that still bleeding head wound. <laughs> Yeah, their little sister. Maybe we should go back to the house. It's like right there. I can see it. <laughs> yeah. we, we have a we have an acre of woods. We're in, in the beginning of it. The house. We just go right to the house. There's medicine. There's food. Yeah. There's everything. Look, we said we would give it a calendar month, and the head wound hasn't healed up. So <laughs> <laughs> now we go so, back. Okay. Yeah. So they're going back for some antibiotics, and I shit you not, Jimmy has his fucking ninja sword. Sophie. Has a goddamn bow and arrow. 
<laughs> right. I, I feel like these two <laughs> actresses had a game going where they were trying to sneak ever sillier weapons into the production. Yeah. <laughs> I wrote, they have a bow and a ninja sword. This movie should be called Rambo First Blood of the Lamb. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, when did Rambo have a sword? That would have been fucking awesome. Did one of them have a Gandalf staff that he had made at this point also? <laughs> no, no, wait, no, it was a spear. He had his homemade yeah, Gandalf Eli has spear. A spear. Yes. Oh, he had a stick spear combo that he lashed together with the reeds from the woods behind their yes, house. Yes, yeah, man. Ooh. 30 days into a, a, a fucking yard camp and you go full Lord of the Flies. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> So. The fat brother's head is on the pipe. Yeah. At the top of the <laughs> All right. So they go back to the house. The, the Sophie and, and Jimmy, the two oldest, tell the little kids to hang back. They go back into their house. The house is filled with rats and skunks. It's only been a month. So I feel like it was already pretty messy to start with. Let's be honest. <laughs> right. But why is the house trashed to this extent? Maybe a tiny bit like, OK, looters came through and took some. But why would they just like flip everything over and like. <laughs> carry in flaming barrels to make it look yeah, extra apocalypse It's so dumb. Well, you know, when the dollar collapses... Antifa. <laughs> Antifa comes and turns your house into a safe space and you use this <laughs> fucking table. The dollar has collapsed. Everybody ransack the couches and look for coins. <laughs> oh, no. Wait, those are... Cents, oh, it's a quarter of, of a dollar. Fuck, I didn't even think about Maybe that. Maybe they have loose gold in the couch. I don't know. <laughs> All right, so they get back to the house. The do uh, Sophie's like, let's split up. And, and even even Jimmy's like, he's from the inside the movie. He's like, no, that's fucking stupid, man. No. Uh, but what the reason she wants to split up is so that she can go get the key to the gun safe without letting him know that she's the one that hit it and thereby killed dad. No luck, though. Jimmy yeah. sees her picking it up. So now yeah. he knows all that. So it was you who took away our Second Amendment rights all along. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. I wanted her to eat the key at that point, just like throw it in her mouth. Like, mm -hmm, suck it. No, no, no. Fish this out of shit now. Deal with it. <laughs> so, all right. So they, they cut her open. Yeah. <laughs> take it. With the samurai sword. See? Yeah, there you go. You guys were making fun of me for having this. Collector's item. Uh, so <laughs> they gain value. The series are limited. <laughs> they were going fast. They were almost sold out. Dude, they, they did said sell the next They sold out. minutes. I called in the next. I visited the website. I wait for the next series. Yeah, didn't get free shipping. I know Anna listens to the show. Fucking got a sham wow too. Trying to make investments for free a family. Sham wow that they. Our guy seemed future. angry that I was getting it at that price. He seemed <laughs> angry, genuinely <laughs> angry. Yeah. All right. So now they got to head down to the basement where they keep the gun safe. There's a corpse in the basement. Sophie's like, oh, gross, a corpse in the basement. And Jimmy's like, fuck off. It's not even somebody we know. Quit whining. She's like, yeah, fair, fair point. Fair yeah. point. <laughs> so and then they go to the gun safe and it's combination safe. It's a combination <laughs> safe. It's they they show us a close up of him putting a fucking combination into it. But before anyone's like, oh, you know, a lot of safes have a, a combination and then they use a key. You would need to show that in your fucking movie, wouldn't That's, you? It would have been real easy for them to also show us him putting a key in it. Yes. Or not show the combination part. Right. Just have it stay a key because you set up a key. God damn it. <laughs> right. There's so many ways to avoid this confusion. <laughs> to be fair, though. If they had had to keep the guns of this movie in a big ass jewelry box, that would have been pretty fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Little ballerina pops up. Dun, 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 dun. Just grab the AK-47 and let's go. All right. So they have a, a quick, you know, should we stay or should we go now conversation, uh, Sophie and Jimmy. And just then a bunch of other people arrive. It's Straw Hat, Adam. Robbie, who we haven't introduced, and Randall, who we'll never introduce. Hey, Keith, in answer to your notes, no, we don't know who the fuck Robbie we is. We have no who the, oh, no idea. <laughs> no. Okay, because they're like, Robbie, we know all about you. So does the audience. This is perfect. Yes, right. <laughs> no, we don't. Nope. Nope. Robbie is apparently Jimmy's buddy from the pre-apocalypse. Guys, maybe this movie okay. is like one of those sacred amulets. That Lara Croft was after. We all got different <laughs> versions. And if we piece it together, we get to see a movie that makes sense. Jesus Christ. 
Um, and okay, and by the way, Adam, the fiance, Sophie's fiance, he's just fine. He's been fine the whole time. He's just been out looting and killing and having a good old time. Yes, which which we discover because she's like gonna borrow his knife real quick, and she's like, "Hey, hun, whose blood is on this knife?" And he goes, "Not a kid <laughs> that I killed for food. Not that." Okay. Nobody asked about a kid. Now it feels like it's a kid. Did you kill a kid? Yeah, I killed it. I killed a kid. <laughs> you did kill a kid. Okay, wow. He goes, well, it's not like I was killing anybody with it. And then his buddies go like, well, you killed that one kid for the food. And he goes, guys, <laughs> come guys. on. He was a big kid. <laughs> Literally what he says. Yes. I wanted him so badly to pull Straw Hat into the other room for a whisper fight. Just like, hey, can I talk to you for a second? Yeah. <laughs> when I'm in the middle, talking to my fiance, I was going to ease her into the I murdered a kid conversation. But now I'm just going to fucking have it. We can hear you guys in the other room. So, it's right there. No, you can't. I'll kill you like I killed that kid. <laughs> Fuck. God damn it. All right. Also, by the way, this guy in the like Oklahoma prop straw hat <laughs> cowboy situation. That's the bad guy from the beginning, right? Yeah. Yes. That's definitely the yes, guy. It is. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's very clear and it should be to everybody. And one of the characters that's supposed to be a good guy is like, aren't you the fucking Pier One import cowboy that tried to kill us earlier? And he's like, no. Yeah, it's like, like, at okay, least fine, change cool. your fucking hat, man. Yeah. yeah. He said no. <laughs> but just then, Adam, the fiance, hears an action beat upstairs. So he has to go check it out. Uh, By himself. Yes, right. No, exactly. <laughs> Only wait. Guys, let's let's check out the creepy sounds one at a time. So then we end up with this amazing fucking fight scene where everything's too close, but they're trying to like, like this guy, like clearly you can see what he was going for in the fight scene. He's like, oh, we have to use the bed. And it's like, all right, now you just have us jump up on the bed and jump back down, man. Why? Oh. But there's so much of that in this fight scene. This will be the first, but not the last arm bar we see in the film. A <laughs> yeah. lot of arm bars in this movie. Yes. They all went to one day of MMA class, yep. learned the arm bar, and they're like, we're using that in a fucking movie. Yep. All of us. That's amazing. That's such a good move. Yeah. That is the extent of karate in the world. They started learning MMA alphabetically. Yes. Yep. <laughs> learned the arm bar, got erections, never went back, lost, <laughs> wasted that 10 class pass. Their wife got them for Christmas. So also there's this amazing moment where like, I guess they figure they got to have Adam do something clever. So he uses uh, an aerosol can to like torch the guy that is attacking him, but he lights it off of the guy's gun, right? So he has to wait for this guy to shoot at him before yep. his plan works. You know how guns, bullets leave a trail of fire in their path? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that would work. Maybe it wouldn't. But I feel like if my plan is, OK, when he shoots me in the face, I sure will get him. It's not a good plan. <laughs> Yowchies. I've been burned. Ow, yeah. A little bit of my eyebrow is missing. Right. now. Are you kidding me? He's dead. I'm going to look him. silly. Yeah. And then, OK, so the attacker, like he, he gets the gun away from the guy. The attacker cuts his leg. And then just then the guy attack. I, I swear I am not making up this resolution. The guy that was attacking Adam slips on something on the floor, falls, hits his head, and <laughs> dies. Die. So again, <laughs> just to be clear, we are two for two <laughs> in fights where a gun is involved in this movie, and two for two times, guns are absolutely useless. Well, I I except that the guy got his eyebrows singed because of That's one. True. Yeah, right. The, the guy with the, the gun was at a disadvantage because the other guy had an aerosol <laughs> can. <laughs> okay, who was this guy that died in this Nobody. Scene? Nobody. They had not introduced this character at all. Okay. I, I, I'm so confused. I have no <laughs> idea at any moment what's happening in this movie. Also, he's, if he's supposed to be the original looters, when he got out, wouldn't he be like, hey, is Robbie downstairs? I'm friends with him or whatever the fuck. Yeah. <laughs> right. All right. So the gang regroups downstairs to reflect on that action beat. And I should point out that this is the part of the movie where I realized that I absolutely loved the lady sitting three seats to my right. Her husband had made her come to this movie. She was not happy about it. And she started getting <laughs> vocal Excellent. right around now. Because this is the point where like Robbie and 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 uh, Straw Hat and Adam are like, well, let us at least give you some food. And so he's like, I don't want your food if you had to kill children for it. And the old lady next to me goes, that's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> the 
That's fantastic. Audience, if you are picturing Noah Norman Batesing himself as an old lady while watching this movie, <laughs> I want you to know so am I. Yeah, and so, yeah, and Adam tries to reconcile with Sophie, and he's like, hey, you know, last time I saw you, you were running out into the woods, and I was risking my life and limb to not tell anybody where you went. And she's like, but you killed a kid. I can't get over that. Something about me and dead kids. I have issues. <laughs> That's my line. That's my thing. Yeah. We're going back in the woods just outside from this house yeah. a little bit. <laughs> we're going back. And then, <laughs> and then Adam's like, come on, we're in a pretty sweet apocalypse, gang, if you change your mind. No. Right. No. Right. But unfortunately, Adam's been injured. So he can't go off with the apocalypse gang. He has to stay back with them. They're going to nurse him back to health. But then he has to go because she's still mad about the kid murder thing. Yeah. And then they go out and bury dad. Very good right. dad burying scene. The only thing I want to talk about with this scene is that as they open his wallet, they find his self-defense insurance card. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Was, I believe there was a concealed carry permit, perhaps, too. Mm -hmm. yep. I think those might yeah. be the same thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they showed that at a funeral by accident in their movie that's pro-guns. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. One of them pull out the tasteful nudes of mom, then the tasteful <laughs> nudes of Jerry Falwell Jr.'s wife. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and then they start singing, which was fun. I uh, I laughed a little bit and got in trouble a little bit, but not too bad. Okay. All right. Yeah. So th there's one middle daughter. We haven't mentioned her because she absolutely doesn't matter to the movie in any way. And the actress seems pissed about it, about how little of a function she serves. I also think I'm not sure because they never let her do anything, but I, I think she might be the most talented actor in the crew. And they like wouldn't let her act so that like she wouldn't make Sophie and Jimmy feel jealous. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, she she also has quite the singing voice, so she sings a little funerary song. I really wanted a gang of warlords to walk up and just be like, "Yeah, we uh, we heard you singing, so <laughs> uh, give right. us all your stuff." Right Quit now, hiding. Fuck, forgot. You guys should really go like twenty feet into the woods because we can like hear and see you, and then you're not hidden at all right <laughs> now. Yeah. So anyway, so now they've got their antibiotics and their guns. They go back to the woods. We have a couple of scenes there. There's a great moment where. Fucking Jimmy is spear hunting deer. <laughs> yep. Spear hunting deer. Weird up moment for the movie. <laughs> he jumps. It's the silliest thing ever. He like silently stalks up onto the top of like a crag and he sees the deer and we watch the deer slowly walk. And then he just jumps down like 40 feet yes. and stabs it. We must assume like through the face, right through the face. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I got in big trouble for, I laughed way too much at this point And I got, yeah, in I laughed at this, this point. Yeah, me too. Me too. I got, this was the first for me. I, what, what, what really got me is that he did everything exactly in the same mannerisms and idioms as Binky does when he attacks my feet under the blankets, right? Like he stalked it exactly, did the exact slow motion jump and everything. Yeah. I wanted so badly for us because it, it does the like jump and cutaway thing. I wanted it for it to cut away. It cuts back. He's crumpled on the ground next to the deer and the deer's just looking at him like, whoa. <laughs> Both of his ankles hurts. are broken. I'm the a deer. deer starts eating him. The deer just takes his sword and walks away. <laughs> Oh, this is You'll a collector's item. This. this is an investment for our family. <laughs> Anna? Don't touch my sword. Nobody's... Oh, yeah. oh she's gone. Oh, he's I took dear. my sword. So, <laughs> fuck you, man. <laughs> so now... <laughs> do, you, you do, do you need a minute? He, Eli uh, was so excited about this. I was so excited. happy. <laughs> Eli is just beaming... Beaming with habit. I'm so happy about that. I have a that sticky on my desktop now when I record that just says puns. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So then we cut to them all feasting on the spear hunted deer. And this is amazing, too, because like none of them are covered in blood. Right. Like, I mean, there's a there's another step after this between killing and eating. But OK, fine. Oh, blood covered faith walks out. That's fine. I'm going to go take a river. Soak. <laughs> Just go in the shower in our house. It's no, right we live in the woods now. <laughs> so, okay. 
And by the way, at this point, too, the old lady next to me goes, who's cutting their hair? <laughs> I brought my sword for this. But a deer took it and my ankles are broken. I don't know. We're going to have to deal with the hair. All right, so Adam and Sophie settle in to have the same goddamn conversation they had in the previous scene and the one before that about how she can't forgive him for all his kid murdering and stuff. Okay, to be fair, in Sophie's defense, it was a month. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you, how fast did you devolve into looting and murdering if we found you post-looting and murdering after him? You made it a week? He got a little hungry, yeah. went to fucking TGI Fridays, and they were out of sizzling skillets, and he was like, yeah, let's go fucking kill some kids. <laughs> but yeah, but she, it, it turns out this is the day that would have been their wedding day, and she gives him back his ring because fuck him and his kid murdery shit. Yeah, uh, quick note to this actor, crying and sneezing, not the same thing. <laughs> not the same. <laughs> Which did I do? <laughs> All right, so then we get <laughs> <laughs> so when the, then we get this amazing scene, and it's amazing. You have to think this one through, right? This is the scene where Jimmy is teaching Eli how to shoot a gun. Mm. But remember when we first met them, Eli <laughs> was schooling Jimmy at chess, but now it's fucking Jimmy who knows something that Eli needs to know. Fuck smart kids. That is so the inspiration of this scene, right? Absolutely. This is an absolute fuck that little poindexter moment. Yep. So Someone got beat by their nine-year-old nephew in chess and then was like, you want to come to the gun rage? And the kid was like, no. And he was like, yeah, because no. you don't fucking know how to do it. Statistically, <laughs> no. I'm way That's more likely why. to kill your aunt with no. this than Didn't I am a bad Didn't your friend guy. Chris Kyle die there recently? <laughs> that, was, that was different. That's cause it was different? They is that what you said? Yeah, they should ban Muslims. Oh, okay. Was it a Muslim who shot him? No. Okay. So I and I, I have to say, like, I was realizing at this point too, like, and, and I should I kinda knew this going in, but like every single moment in this movie is just another scene of like, yeah, but what if I had been right that time when I said that though, right? Yep. This absolutely. Is, this movie right. is thirty to fifty feral hogs the film, right? <laughs> thirty to fifty feral deer yeah. that have swords in their mouth. <laughs> Oh, I love, too, they have the uh, shoot for center mass discussion here. Yep. Oh, God. They they actually, they're like, let's get into the philosophy of, like, you know, leg shooting like the president suggested to get rid of the Mexicans coming across. <laughs> or do we shoot center mass? What's the right thing to do? And they were like, eh, it doesn't matter as long as you kill them. I don't know. Right? You just got to kill them. Yeah. And also, by the way, so as they're having their little target practice moment, the old lady next to me goes, are they just going to waste bullets like that? <laughs> <laughs> Did you ask actually, for her contact information? I feel like she yeah, could guess on this show. I, at the very least, I should have given her my cards. Like, we, you're going to want to check out my podcast on this. Afterwards. You are heavily featured in the yeah, next episode, just so you know. You've got a starring role. You're in it more than Kevin Sorbos in this fucking movie. Anyway. <laughs> this is actually when the couple next to me started talking. And the guy, it was a husband and a wife. The guy started naming the exact specs of every gun to his oh, wife. Jesus and this was like the Christ. first one I heard where he was like, that's the P22 9XG. Fuck you. <laughs> every time that was her response. Shut the fuck up. You're the worst. <laughs> Nobody cares. Shut up, Tom. So, yeah, so they're sitting around the fire some more. They're discussing what what the most beautiful sound in the world is. I, apparently 40 days in or so, the lack of food or potable water is becoming a problem, right? Yeah. Uh, and the nominations, by the way, if you're wondering for most beautiful sound in the world are microwave popcorn. Yep. And amazing grace in four part harmony. Uh, yeah. And, and, and don't forget that this conversation also all began when Jimmy referred to the sound of a, a cocking a gun as the most beautiful sound in the world. So, yeah, I don't know what the most beautiful sound is, but they really fucked it up. Yeah. <laughs> right? I yeah. know they're nowhere close. We've, we've eliminated three answers. <laughs> also, in terms of them running out of food here, they're describing it like, all right, well, our acre of woods is running out of animal life. <laughs> like, <laughs> like animals just are staying on their acre or not. They're in a different acre that we would need to find and we can't. Do th is that how they think woods work? I it's it's amazing how many things they get wrong in this movie. Not knowing how nature works, that sounds about right, par for the course. Yeah. 
wanted to see a meeting of all the animals. They're like, all right, guys, they've been spear hunting us over there. We're just staying <laughs> clear of the Schmenderson we, property. We stay on the Smiths. That's great. Yeah. They're, <laughs> they're not hiding in the woods because they're smart and they're in their house. Yeah. All right. So then we cut to late that night. There's a bad guy sneaking around their camp and stealing their stuff. Now, we don't say we just see feet in a gun barrel, so we don't know who it is. But someone is sneaking around camp stealing their shit. Yeah. So they wake up and they freak out. The bag is missing and so is Adam. The fiance. <laughs> it's their bug out bag, so they bug out. I guess that's what that bag means. I don't know. <laughs> the, takes you don't need a, make sure a you fucking bug, bug out bag from your out. tent you're living in. in the wo- What are you bugging out to? Yeah, right. Underwater. Right. No, this is post bug out. <laughs> yes. All right. This now there's an Antifa gang taking over this woods. Let's run to a city. We'll run to a city. I don't know. <laughs> They'll never Something expect different. it. Does, does that deer have an undercut? Let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that squirrel thinks it's a witch. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. No, it ends Antifa. <laughs> so. All right, so Sophie storms off to find out if Jimmy's got the bug out bags. Apparently, he's very easy to sneak up on guard duty. And then there's just this like, oh, never mind. There's Adam kind of a moment. Yeah, and really, the best thing about this scene is that the scene ends. There's a pause while they wait for the camera to cut. And Adam, like he got in a fight with the writers of the movie, is like, oh, and by the way, I forgive you for accusing me of taking the bags, you bitch. I didn't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Because that makes no sense. <laughs> She's like, uh, did you steal our bug out bag and all our stuff and then come back to the woods as without it? Bit? Yeah. <laughs> and he's right. like, what? <laughs> no. What the fuck are you talking about? But we also there's two more important things that we learned here. First of all, somebody stole Jimmy's MacGuffin. When he went back in earlier, he had grabbed <laughs> right. uh, his sword and a big box of MacGuffin. We don't know what's in the box yet, but they stole the box. And number two, the baddies know where they are, so they'll have to leave now, even though the guy obviously could have just killed them or did whatever he wanted when he stole the bag. But they got to go. He's like the now. chupacabra. He's, they see him yes. first, and then he kills on the second night. This Antifa gang is toying with us yeah, now. Exactly. It's a long con. That makes no sense and scene. That's yep. how this <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. The the gang might just have to camp in the neighbor's backyard for a spell and <laughs> have a willow tree. And those things look creepy at night. So we're going to pause on that suspenseful note. <laughs> but first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell here. Can they shoehorn in 23 more faith wordplay lines in time? Who's at mom least. been double teaming this whole time? <laughs> just why? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the hilariously vapid conclusion of The Reliance. That's right. The word why is a spoiler, sort of. <laughs> it is? Oh. Why? Spoiler? What? You're crazy. You need the extracted algae enamel booster. Not without at least 400 horsepower, you don't. Hey, guys, guys, what are you arguing about? Finally, Noah, settle an argument for us. When it comes to electric toothbrushes, what matters more, power or fancy ingredients? Uh, neither. Uh, incorrect. You need the Enamel Blaster 5000. Noah, it is literally banned in 12 countries. No, no, you need a brush infused with plaque-fighting algae enzymes harvested from the caves of Peru. That's guys, way more guys, important. Guys, why don't you just try Quip? What's Quip? Does it have a blender engine? Is it sterilized in the tears of orphans? No, no. What? Quip was created by dentists and product designers to focus on what actually matters for your oral health. Healthier habits. Orphan tears. Oh. Healthier habits? Yeah. Yeah. Quip's sensitive vibrations with a built-in timer guide gentle brushing for the dentist recommended two minutes with 30-second pulses ensuring an even clean. Oh. Yeah, you actually can't use the Enamel Blaster 5000 for two minutes because your your skull will shatter. It's actually the largest text on the box. In ha, the yes, I told you. But it's not just a great brush. Quip automatically delivers brush heads to you every three months for clean new bristles right on schedule. Okay, technically, you can't change the brush heads on mine, but... Ha! Well, only because the algae needs to cohese 
to the Gorilla Glue. Like glue made out of gorillas, yes. Wow. Okay, so Quip starts at just $25 and you'll get your first refill free at getquip.com slash awful. This is a simple way to support our show and start brushing better, but you have to go to getquip.com slash awful to get your first refill free. Go right now to getquip.com slash awful. Okay. Yeah, that, that that does sound better the thing you described. I'm sorry, is that real dolphin? Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yours, yours too? too? No way. Really? Yeah. Real dolphin. Yeah, for the power. Right. The grease. Yep. <laughs> the powerful dolphin <laughs> grease. <laughs> How can you use that thing after what happened to your daughter? Listen, Ellie, I don't expect you to understand what this weapon... Ow, Jesus. Damn it. Uh, sorry, everyone okay in there? No, you just shot me in the leg. Not okay. Sorry, I was... What I was doing is I was explaining the... Seriously? Okay. Again? Okay, that one was on me. Let me, let me take out the bullets. I'm you. just gonna take the bullets out. Ow! Oh, shit. Did I get you? I got gotcha. you. Yep, I got gotcha. you. I'm sorry. You, you know what? Never mind that, Daddy. Quick, the bad guys are here to kill us. See, see, see. Now they'll see why you don't bring a knife to a gunfight. Uh, Dad, they have guns too. Well, fuck. And you shot me again. <laughs> And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the gang on the move in the middle of a theological argument between Sophie and Jimmy. And yet again, they lose this argument so bad in their own movie. So, <laughs> so badly that they need the person arguing the other side to just decide to machine gun shoot a raccoon to get them out of the <laughs> to argument. Get the fuck out of it. Yep. Literally. A tiny little raccoon appears and he shoots it with an AR-15. Yep. Just slices it into 1,900 pieces. It's ridiculous. <laughs> and, okay, so, but here's the argument Jimmy's presenting. He's like, hey, I bet dad would have prevented all of this if he could, huh? And he's not even omnibenevolent or omniscient, huh? Huh, sis? And then she goes, this is amazing. I've never heard this one before. She says, don't blame God for the devil's sin. What? Blame gun safes. What? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Guns don't kill people. The devil kills. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sorry. People. Devil shit doesn't count if your guy called omnipotence and then made the devil. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and this is where he's like, okay, well, was that the gun's fault just now when I shot that raccoon? It's not the gun's fault. And she's like, well, I mean, I can't see or hear now because of that AR-15 gunshot next to my face. So, yeah, kind of the gun's fault. Also, you, you, your fault as a person. Both you and guns should be banned is what I'm saying. <laughs> and then, so, but in her argument back is just, because he's like, I want cold, hard reality. And she starts yelling the substance of things unseen line, but actually says it as the cold, <laughs> hard reality of things unseen. Yep. <laughs> She could not make it through that bullshit plebeism without being like the cold, hard reality of thing. I'm going to call Noah when he's on the atheist experience and get him. Let me tell you. <laughs> so, she's <laughs> like, I Greek have definition. data. You just can't see it. It's in here. You're <laughs> not allowed to look. Is that a word, by the way? Plebeism? If it's not, I'm going to use either way. I'm using. Yeah, it no, that's, that's I'm great. pretty sure that's a neologism all of Eli's own. But I, I'm, I'm I, I like it. Yeah. Just like Shakespeare. Yep. yep. <laughs> Eli and Shakespeare. <laughs> Both of what them wrote, this, wrote the same number of Shakespeare's plays. Um, also. <laughs> <laughs> also, there's a because so because he's like, you know, why would a loving God do all of this? And Sophie's answer, of course, is that because she's a fucking Christian is, you know, look. Dad and Becca, the, the dead sister, dad and Becca deserve to die because a lady ate an apple. We're just lucky God didn't kill us, too. Yeah, her actual, <laughs> like, fight ending line is the question isn't why are dad and our sister dead? The question is, why are we sinners still alive? Yeah. And the whole cast <laughs> looks in, including the girl who just delivered the line, looks at themselves <laughs> in horror like, oh, <laughs> We have other lines, right? <laughs> <laughs> we 
We are losing this argument to ourselves. I don't know what's happening. I'm yelling. I'm yelling now. I don't know. I've been carving the word why into a tree throughout this conversation. <laughs> Again, I wanted the warlord gang to walk up and be like, you guys are yelling super loud. Like, it's it's just like a very small area of woods you have. <laughs> Two pieces taking of taking all your stuff again. <laughs> One, give us all your stuff. Two, y- you're not going to win these kinds of fights. This is about what you're not talking about. Can I give you that feedback? <laughs> so, all right. So uh, Sophie huffs off after losing this argument to check on Adam's bandages. And they have a conversation about how they sure wish things had worked out a little less apocalyptically. <laughs> and, and they have like a happy moment here. He's like, oh, come on. We're we're all having fun, right? Out in the woods and you know, gunshot wounds and knives and we're hungry. And she's like, okay, yeah, we are. This it is, is kind of pretty cool. This, this is, is kind of fun. fun. All right. Yeah. What, what my dad spent his entire life can, jerking off to, so sure, why not? Super fun. You want to do a flashback together? Yes, I would <laughs> or, love to. Or how about a flash sideways to an alternate dimension, right? Because this isn't. Is that what it was? I, I didn't understand. This again. didn't happen. Right, no, so, couldn't have. Okay, yeah, right. I'm not crazy. All right, I, I was sure. Again, I was like, oh, they set this up in another movie nope. that I didn't know. <laughs> no. The beginning. no. So yeah, so we Vaseline lends our way into her imagination to what their wedding might have been like, <laughs> and this is the time I got in the most trouble for laughing. Right, me too. <laughs> <laughs> because of the music. Yes, yes. When the girls oh start my singing. God. It's so good. So yeah, they ha- they flash sideways to this wedding that didn't happen, and we're hearing the music of like you know what might be happening at a wedding, and then they pan over and there's actually a woman singing the music. So it's that like you know diegetic, non diegetic music yeah. trick, and it's yes. like oh it's look it's diegetic, <laughs> and I laughed way too much, and nobody had any idea why, and I got in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, except that's the thing is I don't think they were using this as a a comedy moment, but they managed it. <laughs> this is hilarious. Also, and I already mentioned this a little bit, but I have to point it out here. This entire shot is done in front of a green screen and not well, which means that this Christian movie could not afford to shoot inside a church. Couldn't get a church. <laughs> Couldn't get, sorry, wedding season. Too busy. <laughs> so, yeah, so they, they go, they have their little wedding um, uh, vision or whatever for a minute but that's all gay as fuck am i right let's go back to gun shooting back to the sorry real quick about the wedding need to cover it when they say i do the preacher says well we all know what's next you can shake your bride's hand yep i'm just kidding do you think they're laughing in the movie theaters as they watch this (laughs) hi mom i'm in the movie now today Who's drinking tonight? I'm going to pass right away. <laughs> but yeah, they they get interrupted by gunshots that invade their fantasy. Uh, yeah, who, yeah, who the fuck knows? She yes. wakes up. She's like, my doodly doo got hijacked. Oh, okay. I'm awake. I'm awake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so bad guys are shooting them. Uh-oh. Uh, the, the bad guys have uh, the drop on Jimmy. So now the other kids have to come to his defense. <laughs> Would we say defense? Well, Eli shoots the fuck out of one of them. That's for sure. Yep. He does actually. Yeah, that was he like good. kills a man. That. By the way, the old lady is not buying this scene. She was no. just going, "Oh, come on." <laughs> there's, a, there's a scene in there where the uh, the the brunette girl that serves no function in the movie has to shoot one of the bad guys through the tent. She can't even see him. She's just the uh, other sister is pointing to vaguely where he is. So she shoots like three times. The guy dies and the old lady is like, oh, come on. (laughs) (laughs) Question in your guys's version of the movie, because this was in mine, but I feel like it wasn't in yours because you guys don't have notes about it. When Eli shot the bad guy, did he go over and press his lips against the dying man's lips and breathe in his last breath? Or was that just my version? (laughs) Uh, You just saw that in your head. I'm pretty sure. Okay. I think you have a weird connection to anybody named Eli <laughs> yeah. in real and fake universes. <laughs> I'm just saying, we all have stuff in common. <laughs> and of course, so and and during this gunfight, like they they capture the boss, but Adam, the fiance, gets shot, and he's gonna have to dry dramatically. And then the movie blacks out and reopens on itself. 
Yeah, right. No, like the camera <laughs> lost consciousness for a second. <laughs> truly, truly. It like blacks out and then they're like, oh, fuck, same place. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is this when it, it comes back in and they got the boz tied to a tree? Would we mm -hmm. say tied to a tree? <laughs> Next to a tree, adjacent to a tree. He's, there's he is, a tree and there's a boss. Yeah. Voluntarily tied up there, right? Like they were doing some kinky bondage shit. Yeah. And he but he's like sitting there, you know, all like crestfallen because he lost the fight. <laughs> yes. Right. Right. And this is when <laughs> the guy next to me is like Obviously, just shoot him with that Sig Sauer P320. And the wife's like, seriously, Tom, <laughs> shut the fuck up. Nobody cares that you knew what gun that was. The old lady and that guy would have gotten along fine for that scene. Because she goes, there's a point like where um uh, uh, Jimmy goes, I should kill you now. And the old lady goes, yeah, you should. And the husband, <laughs> her husband shushed her and she goes, what? It would end the movie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And I will say, I love at, her at this point, She's the best, the whole theater, I think, had turned against. Like, if I had started throwing popcorn, everyone would have started throwing popcorn. I think mm -hmm. at this point, all the Christians were fucking done with it. <laughs> well, maybe it wasn't then. Maybe it was right after the greatest flashback reveal in Christian movie history. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> now, if you'll recall. OK, so Boz was the bad guy that broke into their camp earlier and stole their bug out bag. But he also took that MacGuffin box from Jimmy. And this is when we learned that the reason Jimmy wanted his MacGuffin box so bad is because it had a lock of his dead sister's hair in it, and he never remembered he had pockets, too. <laughs> right? right. <laughs> so we, we cut back to the flashback of whatever did happen to little Becca. This is yep. so goddamn amazing. <laughs> and in case you're wondering what happened, they were playing. <sighs> so, I, again, maybe I blacked out here. I'm not clear. They were playing cut each other's hair as little kids, and then he grabbed the gun out of his dad's ankle holster and shot her in the face. That's Why? it. Why? Yeah. There's, the, it wasn't hair related. These scissors are going too slow. I'm going to shoot the hair off. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, as far as I can tell, that's what they were going for. I have no idea what he was supposed to be doing with the gun. Right? But yes, so dad, now keep in mind that Kevin Sorbo's uh, character here is a doctor, right? Not a cop, not a fucking gunfighter or something. No, he's a goddamn doctor. He's passed out <laughs> on the couch. In a, he's a doctor slash gunfighter. Yeah, yeah exactly. Well, right, right. Yeah, yeah. On the side, sure. So he's passed out on the couch in his home with five fucking children, the oldest one of them, 10. And he has a gun just in his goddamn ankle holster. The kid gets it and shoots his little sister in the face because of Kevin Sorbo's criminal negligence. Yeah. There's, there's just a gun like hanging from yarn like a mobile over a bassinet. <laughs> it you might as like, well be. Nobody that. grab this. There's a yeah. Joe Camel cut out on the wall. Shooting your sister is cool, kids. <laughs> 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 yep. So the brother shoots the sister in the face. That's how she died. That's how dead Rebecca happened. Yeah. And this is right now. The guy next to me says to his wife, he leans over to, he goes, you know, uh, proper safety tactics would prevent that. <laughs> goes, Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Super loud. But I want to point out as we move into the tiny little funeral scene, this is their movie. Right. Yeah. Again, yep. this is a pro Second Amendment movie. They didn't <laughs> they weren't forced by law to include this scene. The position of this movie is worth it. Yes. Right. <laughs> right. Sometimes, you, hey, you got to kill a little kid now and again, if you're going to defend yourself against imaginary shit that can't happen. And then, and then, by the way, after the little funeral scene, they have this moment where, like, dad turns to little Jimmy and goes, it wasn't your fault, Jimmy. And Jimmy doesn't turn back to him and say, no, it was obviously your fault, dad. I'm a fucking kid. You're a grown man. <laughs> Jesus. Public school budget at Stoneman Douglas is, uh, there's more money for kidnap. <laughs> there's a lot of upshots here. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? Get people? straight A's the whole semester. I don't know. <laughs> that, Jimmy. <laughs> You can really fuck up your finger paints this month. I just want you to know. Oh, God. God. All right. So now post flashback, we have uh, Boz meeting little Faith for the first time. Uh -huh. Now, that's the little girl that I guess was named after his dead daughter on the day his daughter died something who the fuck knows. Ooh, when we released the oh. scathing atheist got off a movie's book of tongue twisters. 
The dead daughter who met his dead daughter on the day his daughter died. <laughs> Definitely making it in. Yeah. Dead daughter who met his dead daughter on the day his daughter died. Oh, yeah, they, that's ooh, a yeah. fun one. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. Like these don't really work well for yeah. tongue twisters. I was excited at this point because it seemed like the movie was catching me up. The movie was like, Heath seems confused. We're going to do a flashback <laughs> yes! to the thing he missed. And then Bosworth is like, flashback, flashback, flashback. In the part of the movie that Heath didn't see, yeah. your dad, Kevin Sorbo, shot people and saved my life. And then I was like, all right, well, that didn't help. I will need to be told the plot. <laughs> what, what the fuck was happening here? What, do you guys know? Yeah, again, again I, I, I don't think this was from anything that you missed. So, yeah, you remember when K-Sorbs and Adam and Jimmy fought their way out of that parking lot at the Walmart where Antifa attacked them? Eric Roberts, Walmart. Mm -hmm. we, we cut back to there. <laughs> yes, exactly. And on the way out of that lot, in a part that we didn't see, they saw a bunch of people trying to kill the boss. So Kevin Sorbo's like, I know that guy. He drunk driving killed his daughter with me once. Let's stop and save him. So they stopped, saved Brian Bosworth. He gets in their car, and that's when he realizes, hey, that's that doctor that named his daughter after my dead daughter and realized I was drunk when I came in with her. I'll take revenge against him. That's how this he knew where to go at the beginning what? of the movie. You saving my life is the perfect opportunity for vengeance. Yes, right. <laughs> right. And keep in mind now, he's telling this story to the kids that are trying to decide whether or not to kill him. Yeah. <laughs> Why Bad would he tell them self that advocate. <laughs> Also, uh, if you look in my back right pocket, you'll find... Uh, I was a zip liner. I zip lined all the time, just so you guys know. I just want you to have this information. It's only fair. I want you to take my tactical zip lining sunglasses. <laughs> Olive Garden pasta pants. <laughs> and I love this little detail, though. So he calls his buddy. He's like, all right, we're attacking this doctor's house. And he, then they cut to them, like, laying down in prone position to shoot rifles at Sorbo's family mm -hmm. and Boz clearly called this guy and was like, all right, meet me there at Sorbo's house, but not right away. I'm going to go back home to my house, change into my camouflage gear. Yes. Yes. And then we're going to do that. <laughs> and he's got all his stuff on with the like cargo pockets full of, I don't know what, just full of stuff. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. The guy next to Heath is like, you know, that's the four a 14 tactical <laughs> jacket <laughs> from the fall. Shut the fuck <laughs> up. I, your cargo pockets are stupid. You never use them. You look Sounds ridiculous. Having sex with our son. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> these characters are involving into my favorite people. These, yeah, people, these movie we characters. We need to tell the people next to us, no matter what, at the beginning of the movie, like, you know what? You're going to be involved in some shit. So get yeah. creative. We're like an <laughs> epilepsy <laughs> warning. <laughs> You are. You might not realize this is an audition. This is an audition. By any chance, are you fucking your son? Because that would be perfect for a bit we're going to do. You are? Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So we exit this flashback and everybody stands around going, uh, you know, why would the guy that we were already thinking about killing tell us all of this? This movie makes no sense. And while they're trying to puzzle that out, Adam's like, hey, guys, I'm still dying over here. I haven't had a chance to. Am I a little swan song? Oh, gosh, Adam, I'm sorry. We really got caught up. You okay? No. Oh. <laughs> huh. I forgive you? <laughs> so, yeah. He's clearly dying, and he's like, can we get re-engaged? Can you just take the ring back? And she's like, I love spending time with you. I don't even. I don't. All right. <laughs> You're about to die. She, All right. She puts her hand on him, and she says, no one has given a greater love than you have given me. And like, we know a significant amount of greater loves than the one Adam has given to some, like, we don't even need to use the couples we know. Heath's love for Arby's, for example, <laughs> is greater because it's never involved murder. Yeah, He's right. They're having a deathbed wedding. This is so fucking amazing. As he's dying, she's like, I do, and puts her fucking ring on. And the old lady, bless her fucking heart, goes, Oh, for Pete's sake. Amazing. <laughs> Should have given that woman a job. We missed out. <laughs> I'm just going to hire her to go to all these movies with me. Yeah, just sit next to you. 
This is when the guy next to me said, this is the worst comedy ever when Adam died here. <laughs> <laughs> and the wife is like, I'm getting up and going to the bathroom. <laughs> she left for a while. <laughs> All right, but unfortunately, though, while they were Fuck busy flashing back and <laughs> yep. dying and stuff, the boss has escaped. The boss hasn't just escaped. He is like totally undone all the ropes, packed up his stuff, changed his clothes, <laughs> taken a shower, <laughs> like put all the ropes back and and roped him up in the right way and left him there with a note that says, like, thanks for the fucking company love the bonds <laughs> the, the note says smoke bomb, it says smoke bomb. <laughs> there he is i see the smoke okay guys what did we talk about everyone looking in exactly the same location at all times <laughs> <laughs> so yeah jimmy's pissed because they let the boss get away so he's gonna go hunt the boss down and now the tent is on fire no fucking idea why yeah, he walks in the tent and he walks near the fire, but he very much doesn't like knock anything over nope. or push anything. He's just like yeah, a reminder. There's a fire in this tent and then the tent's on fire. And I was like, I mean, to be fair, there was a fire in that tent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they try to put out the fire for a while, but not for very long. They're, they give up pretty quick. <laughs> they give up so quick. Millennials. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> nope, not even close. You see how the teepee collapsed straight down? I believe that's a pretty big coincidence. Yeah, right. <laughs> Tarps don't burn that hot. All right. Don't say Jews. I said Jews. <laughs> and then, okay, so we cut to the, like some people in the woods, and we're like, uh-oh, who's stalking them now? And they pan up, and it's mom. I had no idea because we saw her like twice early in the movie. I was like, am I supposed to know who that fucking actor is? Yeah. She's also 21 years old and the daughter's 19. Yeah. So it's <laughs> kind of confusing. Yeah, right. A yeah. little bit confusing. Also, those kids were 100% about to murder suicide when mom walks yep. over, right? Yeah. They have a super awkward like mom. And she was like, hey, what's with all the bayonets and the blindfolds on the youngest ones? Oh, <laughs> the, we were playing... Christianity. Murder suicide. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They go because they are playing Christianity. They're like talking about how sad it is that mom and dad died. And the little kid's like, I want to go to heaven and be with mommy and daddy. And the big sister's like, just a little longer. You can die soon. Yeah. And uh, that's perfect. That's a great solution. What you just described. Great. Eight year old. Yeah. You'll die soon. Yeah. But then mom shows up. They have a happy reunion. And apparently mom's been fucking these twins. Good for mom. I Right, like so, these two guys show up <laughs> now, and apparently they're the comic fucking relief. But they were told that the entire audience was going to be made up of their six-year-old niece. These guys are the <laughs> jokesters of the shooting range where this cast goes. Let me tell you, <laughs> Jesus, and they literally announce. I'm I'm not making this up. Like exact words, they're like, "We are the good guys." Hello, yeah, hello. Have, have some chocolate. They literally say that, too. I'm not making this nope. up. You are the good guys. Yes, we are. What's that behind your ear? A bald eagle? <laughs> <laughs> so over the top. And they've also got a comic rivalry, but they don't know how either of those things work. So they were like, huh, I'm the older, handsomer brother. I'm the younger brother. His wife got caught fucking their son. God damn it, man. What? <laughs> you escalate. What did we say? It's I will one shoot step. you in the face. All right. <laughs> and then mom's like, but wait, where's Jimmy? And Sophia's like, oh, fuck, right. No, he already headed out to the climax, like in the last scene. So sorry. Let's go. Let's go catch up with him. So we cut to Jimmy charging through a field with, with his sword. With his sword. <laughs> when mm -hmm. suddenly he steps on a goddamn bear trap. <laughs> steps. I got in trouble again. And gets, I laughed here really hard. <laughs> oh, I, I laughed <laughs> harder than you, Eli, I believe, because after he gets, he hits the bear trap, he puts his belt around his tourniquet. He pulls out his sword to use to like twist and tighten the tourniquet. I thought he was going to cut. I thought he was going to cut off his foot. I thought he was going to cut his foot off too. I was really excited for him to cut his foot off with that like yes. model sword yes. he bought on. <laughs> okay, that didn't even break the skin. Uh, broke the sword. But <laughs> just 127 hours of him with trying to saw his leg off with a fake sword. No, I would watch that. I want to be super clear about bear traps here. They have a release on them. They right? do. When you're they not do. a bear, 
You can just hit the road. <laughs> <laughs> That's the great thing about a bear trap is there's that thing right on it where you can release it. Yeah. But he's just like, bro, 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 bro. bro release too sword. big for my claw and my sword. <laughs> I'm a bear. I wanted a bear to come over and just be like, I got it, dude. I got I got I got, I got it. <laughs> chill. Chill, chill, chill. I'm going to put this on YouTube later. So I'm going to make it on the dodo. But but he yells out. And again, because they're in like 20 feet of woods, he's just like, hell, we're all really close. I can <laughs> see all the movie characters. Help me. You, you can hear me. You're right there. Yeah, yeah. But unfortunately, before the good guys can get to him, Robbie Straw Hat at all show up to kill and rob him. And of course, there's a moment where like Robbie stands up for Jimmy. He's like, hey, man, Jimmy's my buddy. So Straw Hat kills him. That character yep. that we were very connected to. Straw Hat has the best moment because they've got to kill Robbie because we never met him and he never mattered. So he's like, hey, man, don't kill him. He's my friend. And he's like, all right, I won't kill him. Bam. Ha ha. Killed. Huh. Killed you. Get it? <laughs> he didn't see that I was better in my head. It was better than my head. I wasn't a bad head. guy. Psych. <laughs> I had the hat. You guys even said something about it, and I tricked you. It's me the whole time. I was the villain. (laughs) Surprise. But, and and now, though, you know, fucking Straw Hat may think he's got the upper hand, but just then, Jimmy prays and apologizes to God for all his angry tree carving. Uh oh! I still wanted Jesus to show up and go all John Wick on these motherfuckers, but oh. (laughs) <laughs> this whole time I was rooting for a ghost army of like kids that died in mass shootings. Like ever since we saw the little kid at the beginning where Boz saw his like dead child ghost, I was like, oh, Lord of the Rings ghost army is going to win this thing at the end. <laughs> no, no, never happened. Sadly. All right. So now they're about to shoot Jimmy and in the woods, fucking soapy has got a big ass gun, but she's just got to get over her qualms about murdering people. But just before Straw Hat can kill Jimmy, she shoots him and Straw Hat is hit with an arrow. But who shot right. the arrow? Their bow was stolen earlier. But this is shot so badly and we watch Sophie's reaction. So it looks like she's it looks like she's thinking, do do arrows come out of guns? <laughs> yes. <sometimes?"> <laughs> <laughs> yes. And it's shot so badly that I'm wondering if they know they don't. <laughs> I guarantee somebody who's in this movie owns an AR-15 that's also a crossbow. I <laughs> yep. guarantee fucking to you. Mm-hmm. With, a, with a collectible ninja sword as its band. And it's a sword. Yeah, right. yep. And, and it's, it's a, a butterfly hammer. knife. <laughs> <laughs> and it has a cup holder. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, so now the, uh, the bad guy's dead. Mom runs up to Jimmy. She's like, here, drink this. You've lost a lot of blood. We can see his leg. There's no fucking blood. It's no. right. Also, I'm not how water and replacing blood. No, <laughs> right. Yeah, no, you've lost a lot of blood. Drink this. It's blood. <laughs> <I'll> <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> mom, that's been in there for a while. Drink the clotted blood, Jimmy. <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> it's mommy's. There's a menstrual blood joke, everybody. It was a drinking oh, menstrual wow. blood Thank joke. Oh, wow. Thank you, Eli. It's much better when movies. stop and make sure that we all were visualizing it correctly. Yeah. Just trying to differentiate <laughs> our brand. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, and then the Boz apparently is the one that shot Straw Hat with the bow and arrow. And he shows up to turn himself in because he's been redeemed by the blood of the lamb now. He has... Okay, yeah, so he's supposed to be a good guy now because he helped the good guys in this last gun sequence. Yeah. But but that means he was stalking his old crew this whole time, and he saw the bear trap thing happen, and he waited. And he was like, no, 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 there's going to be a more clear redemption opportunity <laughs> yes. if I wait for a gunfight to break out. Get a few shots off, let that happen, but then win at the last minute with my shot. Yeah, yeah. Either that or he was stalking Jimmy specifically. He's like, wait, he's going to get in trouble. I'm going to shoot somebody with his bow and arrow and redeem myself. He's going to hurt himself with that sword somehow. (laughs) Oh, bear trap. That's even better. Oh, and now he's sawing his leg off. I'm going to let this go. I'm going to see how this plays out. I think I'm going to be the hero here. So, and then, of course, now mom has to have the, should I murder this guy or not? Keeping in mind, Brian Bosworth is the guy who killed their, their dad or her husband and ran the kids off and terrorized him for a month or whatever. But of course it's a Christian movie. So she has to ultimately decide not to kill him. 
because he says to her, and I quote, I never wanted to take your faith. I just wanted to find mine. Get it? It's a little girl. <laughs> faith. Named faith. Oh, and it's the ultimate what's in the box scene. It's like just like that. And I wanted her to be like, what's in the box? And he's like, a lock of your daughter's hair. Did we do set that up from before? <laughs> And and then, of course, Faith runs up and hugs all the remaining bad guy right out of him. Mm -hmm. And this is like the movie should end right there, but it doesn't. It doesn't end for so goddamn long at this point. Right. Mm -mm. It does not because they have to baptize the boss. Oh, my <laughs> fucking. Yeah. OK, come so on. You did not see a baptism coming in this. Movie. I certainly didn't think it was going to end on a group fucking hug. No, I did not. A three man group hug. Oh, my God. OK, Amazing. so the two deputy sidekick comic relief guys or whatever are escorting Boz back to their town where he's going to go on trial for murder. Boz has this little Oscar clip moment where he goes, how could they forgive me for all of that? One of these characters that we don't know who the fuck are goes, you know, he says, how can I ever repay him? And, and the guy goes, you'll never repay him, but someone's already paid it for you. And I took some Excedrin. They don't kick in quick, but they do <laughs> kick in eventually. Oh, Jesus. That was Jesus that you're <laughs> yep, talking about? That was Jesus. Yes. <laughs> Jesus. Also, Little Faith has a line here so where she stupid. goes, he might end up being the best of us. And I wanted so badly for her brother to be like, well, no, like one of us yeah. might commit zero murders. So, <laughs> nope, he'd be better. I could think of other numbers <laughs> less than that number. <laughs> yeah. So, of murders. And then it's time for Boz to ask God for forgiveness and have one of the two deputy dudes. Oh, I'm sorry, both of them, the two twin dudes, come out and baptize him in the river. Mm -hmm. They double baptize him. Yep. Is that? Do you get extra? He had a lot of sense. Baptizing. Yeah, you're points? you're Christian and Mormon at that point. Yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. And, and <laughs> gotcha. by the way, Jimmy also wants to get baptized now because he believes in Jesus now too. So he runs out, and <laughs> the boss helps baptize him. He does the Mormon half of his baptism, and then they literally all have a giant group hug. Mm. the guy that killed your dad it's fantastic uh by the way when this movie comes out to amazon next week i am going to make that three wet dude hug my screensaver right now it is vin diesel sad in a graveyard uh at Obviously. the end of fast and the furious six but this yep. is this is gonna take its place all right uh, when they finish the baptizing and they do the hug i wanted so badly for somebody to just paddle by on this little creek in a canoe and just be like guys there's no Apocalypse. It's, everything's fine. It was it was one mom. It was one Walmart that one day, and now it's it's all set. We're Did you guys good. hear about the flash mob down at the Walmart? Yeah, a bunch of folks got scared. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, so for some reason, they figure they still needed one more scene after the group hug, so we got one uh, where we get some hilarity from the deputy guys. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, this point of this scene was to set up for the sequel. Yep. Well, also for Faith to go, <laughs> is there hope for our nation, I mean? And them to go, well, our community is one of the few still standing up to tyranny. Yeah. As long as this one little town in rural Ohio is still around, America has a chance. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's what they're saying. President Tim Ryan will take us out of this land. <laughs> and then and then after all of that, we pan down to that tree that uh, Jimmy was angrily carving Y into earlier. And we close the movie zooming in on him having carved Y. Because <laughs> the makers of the movie are like, that's that's why. <laughs> what? <laughs> Should we do a different question word? Well, how? Yeah. <laughs> How? Whence? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. After the third ending, the movie actually does cut to credits. So that's going to do it for our review of The Reliant. Uh, but that is not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to tease next week's selection. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. From the makers of The Unexpected Bar Mitzvah oh, good. comes <laughs> the story of a grandpa going back to college to disprove the Big Bang. It's... Gramps goes to college. <laughs>
all right, here's how many too many of these I've watched. I'm literally thinking, haven't we watched that before? Because it sounds so fucking bad that it just seems like something I've experienced. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So with Gramps Goes to College to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 219 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors to help make the show go. If you'd like to get yourself among the ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review on iTunes and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. If you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Alien Citation, and The Skeptocrat, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of B. Andrew Torres. Our theme song is written and performed by Ryan Slott and Legal Drafts on Mars. All of Music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a check of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another check next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club flows. Tim Ryan saw this movie, ended his presidential campaign that day, <laughs> and fled into the woods behind his house in Ohio. I feel like I should send a little consolation text to Eli when I heard about that at 2 a.m. He met hundreds of families back there. <laughs> Noah would go on to meet a listener on his way out of the theater. Hi, Steve. Hi. <laughs> Little Becca's tombstone reads, Worth it. <laughs> <laughs>